Good morning, everyone. I hope you all had a wonderful 4th of July, that you got to enjoy it with family and friends, or how you choose, and that, well, that you had a safe holiday. And of course, if you saw my Facebook Live from yesterday, you know when I'm talking about safe, I'm not just talking about physically safe, but emotionally, spiritually, mentally safe throughout your entire body and being. So if you missed that Facebook Live, you should go to my Mountain Phoenix Center for Vibrant Living Facebook page and check out yesterday's Facebook Live about beliefs and how they can contribute to things being stuck or blocked in your life, in your body, in, well, moving forward in the direction that you want to move or how they can actually open up pathways and create pathways to what you want to be experiencing, what you're wanting to create for your life. They're really important, so check that out. But today I want to take a couple of moments and talk to you about what your body is physically telling you and to look beyond what it might mean physically. And what do I mean by that? I would ask some questions. Have you ever experienced something physically in your body? An injury, an illness, a level of tension, tightness, um, a moving pattern, or loss of function, or, well, something in your body that doesn't seem to be explained by the logical, physical reasons you would expect. For instance, you start to notice that your hips are tight or your low back is tight or that your gait when you walk is changing or your stomach might always feel a bit nauseous or upset, might be talking to you in some way. Um, you're going to the bathroom a lot these are all things that, yes, can have a physical explanation. You know, if you had an injury that meant that for a period of time that you were limping or not walking fully solid in both your legs, like maybe you injured your knee on a hike, and as a result, you've been walking differently for a while, it may take you some time to get your normal gait back even once the knee injury has healed. Or maybe with your stomach being upset, there doesn't seem to be a physical cause because you haven't changed your eating habits. There's nothing in particular that's going on. Um, you, know, you haven't gone to a new restaurant. You haven't um, eaten new foods, but yet your stomach seems to be always upset. Or this one makes me laugh a bit. And I know people who experience this, myself included at times, not to get too um, personal, but who are constantly in the bathroom because they have to, or because they have to go. And yet, again, there doesn't seem to be a physical reason for it because um, eating habits haven't changed or anything like that. Um, I know my dog's barking downstairs. I suspect we have a turkey or something out front. That's usually the reason for his barking um, at this time of the day. So I hope he, oh, I think maybe he's stopped. Okay, so what do you do when there is something physically going on in your body? I share this because I, I see people get frustrated. I've been there. I get frustrated as well when you recognize there's something physically happening in your body and you take steps to take care of it, whether that's stretching or you get a massage or you get adjusted or um, maybe you're looking at your eating habits and trying to clean them up some um, because thinking maybe that's what's affecting your how your stomach feels. And none of those changes, none of those efforts or actions that you're taking are changing what's happening in your physical body. Those symptoms or those patterns continue. And so then you might try some more things or be more consistent with the efforts that you're making and they still go on. 
And part of you is, what the heck? I know I am like that. I, I have my own checklist that I've created when things start physically appearing in my body to clear out the physical first, because that can be one of the easiest ways to address what's going on in your body. I know for myself, if I'm experiencing um, increased or unexplained tension, tightness, um, just not feeling good in my body, things aching that aren't explained by a hike or some form of physical activity, that sort of thing, or being sitting in the car for a long drive, that sort of stuff. I'm going to look at hydration um, to see if I've been consistent and diligent with my drinking water. Um, I'm going to look, have I eaten out more than typical? Because I know my body does not feel as well, <clears throat> excuse me, when I have eaten out more. I don't eat as well as when I cook at home. Um, have I been sleeping well? So yes, absolutely check through your physical potential reasons for what you're feeling in your body and address those first, especially if you don't know what the underlying cause is. But if you're finding that this isn't making a change, that yes, you might get some relief, you might notice some little things, but overall the situation continues, then it's probably not a physical underlying cause. It is probably something that is emotional, mental, spiritual. It's something else. And it can be, and where things get more complicated is it can be something that's happening now but it could also be something that happened five years ago, 10 years ago. It could have happened when you were developing in utero or in your first few years of your life. And it could be events or circumstances that you're not even aware of have occurred. And that's when things get a little challenging. But if you're finding that you're stuck, that your physical circumstances aren't changing, just spite making physical changes or addressing them, then in my opinion, it's absolutely time, if you have not already, to look at what the underlying emotional, spiritual, mental, conscious and subconscious reasons might be. And that's why there, well, that's one of the reasons why people come to see me. It's one of the reasons why um, I think the work that I do is so powerful because we can get to those underlying emotional mental, spiritual reasons move beyond just what might be the physical. And I say this because I've had a conversation just today about somebody wanting to know about what they're feeling in their body and how it feels when it's not an underlying physical reason. Now, I've had my own situation where when I was growing up, starting around the age of 10, and I just discovered some of this as information reason, recently, or I uncovered some new layers, I guess you could say. I have been addressing this emotional trauma, I guess you could say. Um, that would be a good word to describe it, a good phrase to describe it. This emotional trauma from that started when I was around 10. It involved an adult in my life, and one that I saw, and was around consistently. And as a result of my interactions with that person, and I'm keeping that person, well, anonymous because um, I'm talking about my life, um, not about theirs. And this is my experience and my knowledge and awareness of it. It's my, yeah, it's my perceptions. It's my beliefs around it or what were. And, but through the course of a decade, of about a decade, yes, of interactions with this adult, I developed a, a physical pattern in my body. Um, I'm sure you've seen a dog that is scared, that's getting yelled at, maybe that's gotten hit in the past, whether it's on a movie or in your own experience, um, that tucks its tail. The head goes down, the tail gets tucked. Um, they try to get small. That might happen sometimes when they're around an, another, um, like an alpha dog or a big group of dogs. Um, that was my experience with, as a result. And I wasn't aware this was happening when I was 10. Um, but basically when I was around this adult, I would tuck my tail. And at least that's 
now how I would describe how it physically came into my body. I would tuck my tail. I would tighten the muscles of, well, of my pelvis, of my buttocks, um, much like tucking a tail. Um, and I left like that for decades um, because with my most recent clearing of layers of that experience when I was a kid, um, this is what I discovered. And it's explained so much of what I was feeling physically in my body. Now, if you know me, you know I was getting adjusted. I see an acupuncturist. I have a couple of massage therapists that I work with. Um, I do my own healing, clearing, addressing um, of both physical, emotional, spiritual, mental patterns um, that no longer serve and support me. Um, I've done shamanic work. I've, I mean, the list goes on, meditation and hiking and being out in nature. You name it, I've on some level consistently do those things. So, and I believe that this is what brought me to this place of uncovering this next layer, discovering this next layer. But I've done yoga for years, um, a couple years at this point, and was definitely noticing physical patterns in my body. And despite addressing it physically, wasn't seeing much change, wasn't seeing much progress until I was able to, um, I've been working with a, an intuitive healer myself. Um, because for those who don't know me, I am an intuitive healer. Um, and my biggest challenge as far as intuitive healing is getting in my own way. Um, and I know from talking to other healers, that tends to be the case as well. Um, so in working with my own intuitive healer, we were able to open a door and it's allowed a level of release um, physically, emotionally, spiritually, well, mentally, that has been amazing. Um, it really was almost like a lock that unlocked um, so many other things that once that piece was addressed. Um, but as a result, I've had to learn to stand differently, move differently, walk differently. Um, because as you can imagine, if your tail's tucked versus it being up and happy <laughs> um, and open, vulnerable, um, yeah, it's, very, it's a very different experience. Um, I've literally had to learn how to be physically among other ways, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually um, in my body. Now, I do think that this is a big part of my most recent breakthroughs and how I'm yeah, showing up even more vibrantly than I was previously. Um, so I'm saying all of this because if you're stuck with a physical pattern in your body and it's not changing, then you need to look elsewhere. You need to look at the emotional, the mental, the spiritual. And when I mean mental, I'm not necessarily meaning mental illness, though that could be the case. Um, I'm... I'm talking about thought patterns. I'm talking about mindset. I'm talking about beliefs. Um, yeah, what we think. So <clears throat> now if you find yourself, and I realize, I mean, I, I could talk about this for a really long time. I realize that if this is what you're experiencing, you're wondering what to do next. Well, you absolutely can ask me questions, make comments, private message me, give my office a call, and we can do a complimentary phone consultation. Um, that number is 828-230-7253. But if you want to dive into this on your own, there's a couple of things that you can do to get started. One, I recommend um, Louise Hay's book, You Can Heal Your Life. That gives some really good information at looking at or beyond just a physical cause for something. So check that out. Um, you can also do some, what I call stream of consciousness journaling, where you just start writing and can ask the question, you know, what is my body trying to tell me and answer that question without trying to pay attention to grammar and sentence structure, just write and whatever comes, just let it come. No judgment, um, until there's nothing left to write. And that can often give you some insight because it's bringing it out of your body. It's bringing it out of your being. Another um, thing that you can do is deep breathing along with scanning your body and, you know, just closing your eyes and getting comfortable and 
breathing and literally going through your body and seeing what you notice. And as you, once you go through it once, you can go through it again and you can ask, what is it you want me to know? And people can be really surprised on what they discover. So again, what you're feeling in your body physically may not be, may not have an underlying physical cause. It can have an emotional, mental, spiritual, it can be conscious, it can be subconscious, it can be ancestral, it can come from previous generations in your family. Research is starting to show that now. Um, it's not just something that healers like myself believe, but research is actually supporting that. And it is, well, these are some examples of some steps you can take. And as I said, you can contact me, you can ask questions, you can, um, yeah, have a complimentary consult with me. Feel free to ask questions. This is an important topic. It can really make a huge difference in how you're living and showing up in your life. Okay, well, I'm heading out for a day of hiking um, in the beautiful mountains here in Western North Carolina. And so I'm going to get packed up to head out to do that. I hope you have a phenomenal day. And until we connect again, I'm sending love and health and synergy to you. Enjoy it. Bye.